Let's bring in Olsi Jazekshi, who's a historian and social activist who joins us from Kuala Lumpur to uh, tell us more about this. Olsi Jazekshi, welcome. First of all, you have this incident where you have the Press TV camera crew um, and uh, probably the one making the presentation to have been attacked by the, by the MKO or the MEK uh, cult group. Uh, what does that say about the nature of this cult? Well, this is not the first uh, attack that uh, the MKO is doing against the free media. Uh, they have a long uh, history of uh, terrorist activities and attack against uh, democratic institutions. Uh, the, the Mujahideen al halq uh, terrorist organization, in the past, they have even killed uh, uh, American officials. And the very nature of this cult is against democracy and uh, free speech. Uh, since their coming uh, or their massive coming to Albania in 2016, the Mujahideen, they have attacked dozens of Albanian journalists and medias. They have attacked and beaten journalists from Channel 4, a British channel, and they have verbally abused and attacked the Guardian, the Independent, um, the BBC and uh, Al Jazeera. So what happened today in Sweden is nothing new from this cult. The, this cult, they do not accept debate, they do not accept opposing views, because they live in a totalitarian cult-like society. Uh, for people who know the organization of the Mujahideen al halq cult in Albania, uh, they know that these people, uh, they abuse even their own members. Their members who are held as slave soldiers in Albania, they are not allowed to contact their families, they are not uh, allowed to serve the internet, or they are not even allowed um, to communicate with the outside world. This organization is extremely dangerous, and their attack against uh, your journalists today in Sweden is what we have seen um, ISIS or Daesh or Jahbet al-Nusra or other terrorist cults do against the journalists uh, throughout the world. You mentioned that they have attacked uh, and killed Americans. Uh, why is it then that the Americans, uh, now two consecutive governments, if not maybe more, whom at one point called it a terrorist organization, are supporting them? Well, it is not the American government, it is uh, Israel and Mossad. We know from their activity in Albania that the, the extreme actions of the Mujahideen al halq in Albania are uh, coordinated by Israeli uh, security services. In 2018, when I was at the European Parliament and I gave my testimony about the illegal and criminal activities of the Mujahideen al halq European MPs uh, uh, told to us, we were a group of European experts, that how a foreign country, which is not even a member of the European Union, enables the Mujahideen to have access to the European Parliament. The mission of the Mujahideen is to poison the relations between Iran and the Europeans. And the, the case of Mr. Nouri, who has been abducted, the, he uh, literally has been abducted by the Mujahideen uh, in collaboration with the uh, uh, Swedish authorities, uh, shows the desperation that uh, Israel is having and the scandals that Israel is trying to create against Iran. A few days ago, here in Southeast Asia, where I am, we had some fake news being spread against Iran by Bangkok Post. And later, this fake news, which was claiming as if Iran is going to do some kind of terrorist action in Southeast Asia, was taken by Jerusalem Post. So coming back to the Mujahideen and to your question, the American government knows very well who are the Mujahideen. But the, pr the problem is that in this very moment, when we have this heightened tension be between the regime in Tel Aviv and, uh, and the government in Tehran, uh, they are moving anything they can to create scandals against Iran. And the attack that you saw today in Sweden is not the first nor the last. 
uh, uh, Mujahideens, they have shown in the past that, that when they take orders, they are ready to produce even suicide bombers. In Albania in 2018, they have attacked a Canadian family, the family of Mustafa Mohamedi. They attacked a father and a mother who had come to Albania to meet their daughter who has been abducted from Toronto, Canada when she was 17 years old. And the Mujahideens, not only that blackmailed the Albanian government, but they even beat this family and this family ended in hospital. They were hospitalized. And you know what happened? When the Albanian police arrested the, uh, a group of Mujahideens for their illegal and violent action in Albania, they were released within few hours. Why? Because a foreign power intervened in the internal affairs of the Albanian government, and these criminals, they got free. Uh, well, you talk about how Israel is uh, uh, behind the uh, MKO cult, that it's really uh, the regime in Israel that is uh, giving, from what I'm understanding from you, the support. Um, there are also many um, data and information that point towards the fact that you have uh, the Mossad uh, members uh, that are actually affiliated with the, with the MKO and that they actually work together. Um, do you think that some of these terrorist acts that have been committed inside Iran uh, have been in cooperation of Israeli elements along with uh, the MKO cult? Definitely. Uh, if uh, you follow the activities of uh, the Mujahideen cult from Albania, they have said it openly in front sometimes of uh, American officials who are on orders on, of Israel, and they have openly said that we are ready to fight against the uh, the government in Iran. The Mujahideens do not hide this fact, and this fact is uh, putting the Albanian government in a deep problem. The reason is that we in Albania, according to our penal code, if any individual or organization does a, a military or a violent activity against a foreign country, according to our penal code, is, uh, is, is labeled and is uh, charged as a terrorist. But what happens in the case of the Mujahideen is that even though they openly say that we're fighting against the government of Iran, even though that uh, there are plenty of facts and beyond any doubt to see the open connection between the Mujahideen and the government of Iran, even though if you read the Israeli media and Mossad publication, they fanatically defend this cult, the Mujahideen, they have uh, a good luck that they get away with murder. If any European citizen will do against a foreign country what Mariam Rajavi and her terrorist gang does against officials in uh, Iraq or in Iran, they will all face justice. But uh, because the Mujahideen serve to the uh, agenda of uh, Zionism and to the repression of the Palestinians, they can do anything they want. It was back in 2012 when they were actually removed from the U.S. list of terrorist organizations uh, when Barack Obama was actually in power. And according to just some basic information that's out there, this is due to the fact that uh, they actually led a multi-million dollar uh, push and campaign uh, to be removed from that. I'm curious as to where they're getting their funds and um, how they are able to, for example, uh, deliver funds to uh, members of Congress in the U.S. and, as you mentioned, the accessibility to politicians, which includes um, mm, payments, for example, for, the, for, the, for these uh, politicians to appear at their uh, so-called um, mm, groupings or, or meetings or what have you. Uh, so where is the source of funds coming from? Well, uh, the Albanian government has been ordered by the Americans not to reveal their sources of funding. Investigative journalists, uh, some from uh, Klan TV in Albania, they have managed to fill Mujahideens uh, having a, a big amount of cash with uh, dollars coming from uh, Arab banks, most probably Saudi money. In Albania, there was a case of money laundering of the Mujahideens because they have created many fake uh, uh, companies in Albania which they use to launder money. But what is the funniest of all these things is that when, uh, in some cases, Albanian prosecutors 
have sent the Mujahideen to court for money laundering, they get away with money laundering in the middle of Europe uh, because they claim that we have to launder money in order for Iran not to find the source of our money. So what many uh, journalists and investigative researchers uh, uh, who deal with the Mujahideen uh, believe is that the main source of money for uh, the Mujahideen is Saudi Arabia, but they are under the order of Israel. Now, if we see uh, the events that Mujahideen do every year, sometimes even on a, a periodical basis, uh, most of the uh, Western officials who attend their events, they are approached by Israeli lobby companies who approach them and, of course, promise to them huge sums of money. Now, where does the money come? Something is certain uh, with the huge spending that the Mujahideen have. They run a city in Albania where, according to our calculations, they spend minimum $2 million every month for maintaining their paramilitary camp. So for running this organization, they need a state funding. They, are, they cannot be funded by private individuals. And moreover, I don't think that the Israeli state is so generous to give money to these terrorists. So our major uh, suspicion is that the Saudis stand behind them. Uh, recently, you actually talked about how the U.S. Embassy was blackmailing the uh, um, Albanian police over uh, what was released based uh, on a report that revealed MKO trafficking. Um, again, we're trying to get to the depth of this cult to figure out, not to figure out, but to see what kinds of illegal activities they're involved in. What was the, what was the story behind that? Well, the story is that uh, in uh, July 2021, uh, Albanian police had arrested uh, uh, Narges Abrishamchi, she is the sister-in-law of Mariam Rajavi, together with one Iranian ex-wrestler who they were trafficking drugs to Italy. <laughs> and now, uh, probably informed even by the Italian partners, Albanian police had to do the arrests. But what happened is that we didn't see these people facing the court. Uh, a number of uh, medias in Albania, they published this news, and they even showed that uh, officials from U.S. Embassy in Tirana had gone and had blackmailed Albanian prosecutors to close the case against the Mujahideen. Greece and Italy are particularly uh, worried about what is happening in Albania with the Mujahideen because there are many police reports and facts and even from Greek and Italian secret service, which have documented that Mujahideen are involved in drug smuggling and smuggling of refugees. The Mujahideen have been proven beyond any doubt that they smuggle people. One of the people that they smuggled uh, uh, two years ago was uh, one Mujahideen by the name Hadi Sanikani. This man, he was smuggled with a fake passport to Greece and from Greece, he boarded an airplane, and then he was sent to France, to Paris. The French Interior Ministry knows this case very well, but what happens is that, for some reason, Mariam Rajavi doesn't end in jail. And what happens is that the, the, the very cult of the Mujahideen and their illegal activities in Europe are protected by Israelis, and when European governments, they do not want to hear to the Israelis, then the Americans jump in. Now, when it comes to the freedom of media, when the Mujahideen came to Albania from 2016 to 2019, there were so many reports about what the Mujahideen were doing. They were accused and they were even charged by Albanian police for sodomy, for, for pederasty. They were charged for so many crimes, but what happened is that the Mujahideen, they have blackmailed each and every media in Albania. I have testimonies from media owners in Albania. One of them is the owner of Ora News, Ulin Droshi, to whom the Mujahideen went to his office and told him that if you do not remove the news against us, then you will have problem with the CIA and the Americans. We have other examples like Gazeta Shutaria in Albania, 
which have published detailed reports about the criminal activities of the Mujahideens, but what happened later on, all these reports, which the Albanians, by the way, took by Canadian medias, were deleted. What Mujahideens do very often, and the way how they work with the media, is two. Number one, they threaten, sometimes they even beat journalists. On the other, uh, on the other hand, when they see that they cannot blackmail certain journalists, they go and buy them. We have stories in Albania of Mujahideens going with uh, bags full of cash and buying medias in order to remain silent. They are with a mission in Albania and in Europe. Their mission is to demonize Iran. Their mission is to incite a war against Iran. Their mission is to convince the Europeans, on behalf of Israel, to start another war in the Middle East. Uh, they are enemies of Europe, because a war against Iran is going to destroy not only the Middle East, but all the EU. And European politicians have to do something about it. But as we can see with the uh, present conflict now in Russia and Ukraine, unfortunately, Europeans have lost their independence and they are afraid to defend their national sovereignty. All right, we just got a couple minutes left. Have you ever been approached by the, this cult group uh, for them to try to uh, silence you in terms of uh, the vast wealth of information that you have just discussed, which I'm sure you have a lot more of it? Uh, no, I haven't personally, but <laughs> they have approached a number of my colleagues in Albania, journalists. Uh, many of them have been blackmailed. Many have lost their jobs. But the Mujahideens usually, they go to the media owners. So they use two forms. One is blackmail and the other one is offering money. Uh, I am not a media owner. I'm not that uh, important in Albania. But what they have done is that they have... Uh, uh, gone to many medias in Albania, and they have uh, told them to censor me. So what the Mujahideens uh, try to do, they censor the free speech. I have challenged in the past uh, Mariam Rajavi and their commanders, like uh, uh, Mehdi Abrishamchi or Behzad Safari, for open debate. Uh, the, the Mujahideens and Mariam Rajavi and their supporters, uh, like Mike Pompeo, John Bolton, and other uh, Zionist lunatics, they uh, claim that the Mujahideens want to bring democracy to Iran. And we have told to the Mujahideens, good enough, but we have told them, do you dare to have a democratic debate with us? Can you please come out and show to the world why you abuse your slave soldiers, why you brainwash them, why don't you let them to create families, why don't you give them freedom? And when you don't give freedom to your own people in, in your paramilitary camp, how can you bring democracy to Iran? And when uh, the, the, the MAC cult, which claims that they want to bring democracy, but they, they are not democratic. Huh? But we, I have challenged them and I've told them, why don't you do uh, free elections within your own camp? The problem with the MAC camp is that, that they are they, they, they are puppets. They are nothing more than that. Uh, for people who know them in detail, they are a desperate cult, a cult where many of its members are dying because many of their members are ex-prisoners from the war of Iran-Iraq who were captured by Saddam Hussein and given to Mariam Rajavi. Mariam Rajavi is a desperate old woman. And the, the news that we see that the Mujahideens have lately resorted to trafficking drugs to Italy, it shows probably that the Saudis or whoever sponsors them, they are cutting their funding. And on the other hand, there are many Mujahideens who have defected. Even though the Mujahideens uh, keep their, their members in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a prison within their paramilitary camp of Manza, many Mujahideens have managed to escape into freedom. And this is a great nightmare for the cult. And this cult, if they do not have the American and Israeli uh, protection, and if Mariam Rajavi doesn't have money to uh, keep her slave soldiers in the camp, this cult will break off within a week. Thank you very much for that. We appreciate it. Thank you for your time. We'll see. Well, Zekshe, who's a historian and social activist there, talking to us from Kuala Lumpur. Many thanks.